Thank God for the Word. Amen. Are you ready for the Word? Yes. If you got your Bibles, go with me please to the book of beginnings, Genesis chapter 3. This morning, Genesis, that's not difficult to find. It's the first book of the Bible. Praise God. I don't know where my notes went, but uh, I'm sure the Lord will help me, so, so that's fine. Oh, that's okay. No worries. I, I memorized it. Genesis chapter 3. Let's uh, pray over the Word today. I, I, I don't think uh, that we still understand the words of Jesus where He said that, uh, and actually He told the devil He had to give the devil an education. And uh, he told the devil there in the wilderness, Matthew chapter 4, he said, uh, Man shall not live by bread alone. So, so, you know, in this nation we know everything about drive-thrus, double drive-thrus. We know, we know something about breakfast, lunch, and dinner and snacks in between. In fact, a few years ago Taco Bell came up with a marketing slogan for the fourth meal, the midnight snack. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we know about that. But how much do we know about feeding our spirit? How much do we know about feeding the eternal part of us? Amen? So thank God for a sandwich or a hamburger. But Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Amen. So I'm believing today for, a, for a, a full meal that our spirits will be strong enough to do what God's called us to do uh, in this hour. Amen? Amen? But Father, we thank you for the word. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Thy words are spirit, they are life, and they are health unto all thy, our flesh. You have sent your word and healed us and delivered us from destruction. He that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of God would speak to the church in this hour. And Father, we humbly ask you for utterance in the Holy Spirit that I should open my mouth with boldness and speak the word as I ought to speak, as the oracles of God, a word in season. And Lord, let your people receive it with joy, with gladness, and let us not be hearers only, but Father, help us to be doers of the word of God. In Jesus' name, can you say amen? amen. Now, Genesis chapter 3, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. I want you to notice this morning that the first thing that the devil does, the serpent, the way you can identify him quickly, is that he comes to challenge the authority of what God said. And that will always be the, the spirit of, of the devil and the Antichrist, that he said, hath God said? Well, what should she have responded? Yes, God said it, conversation over. <laughs> but that's not what happened. Notice the text, please. Verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now that's pretty serious, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I said it's pretty serious, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You see, sin and disobedience to God is very costly. It's cost a lot of marriages. It's cost a lot of families. It's cost a lot of businesses, even churches and ministries, and even nations, because they fail to hear and obey what God said. Notice the serpent is still talking in verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. So the first thing that he did was question the integrity of the word. And the second thing he did was just outright defy what God said. He said, Ye shall not surely die. How many of you know when God says something to you, He's not lying to you? When the Lord says something to you, there's no, there's no thing, you know, what's that called where you cross your, you know, something behind your back or fine print or, or sometimes some, trying to trick somebody. That, that's the way the devil works, trying to deceive. I do not like to be deceived. Are people trying to deceive me? 
Hey, I don't, I don't like that. I know you don't like it either. Well, they said the first uh, foundation of any good relationship is trust. Our integrity. If you can't trust the other person, how can you have a relationship? The serpent said in verse 4, You should not surely die, for God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw, somebody underline, asterisk, if you're not making notes, make a mental note. When she saw. So instead of going by what God said, she went by what it, what it appeared. What it looked like. Amen. She saw that the tree was good for food. It was pleasant to the eyes. The enemy, he, he knows about lighting, marketing, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Amen. It looked good. It looked pleasant. A tree desired to make one wise. She took the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did it. Now if her husband was with her, why did he let the serpent keep talking? Mm -hmm. yeah. The Bible said God, and God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and he placed the man that he formed, Adam, there, and he commissioned him. He gave him his work. And so before he gave him woman, he gave him work. I go over that part again. Before he gave him woman, he gave him work. Now you don't have to take my word for it. You can study the Bible for yourself. But you'll see God's order is always the best. Amen. If you try to get things out of order, you're going to get yourself in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> you got mighty quiet there in the Spirit-filled church. But <laughs> it looked good. She ate and gave to her husband. He did eat. And the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked. See, before that, they were clothed with the glory of God. They sewed fig leaves together, made themselves apron. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Adam and his wife hid themselves. This is the first time that sin and shame came into the world. We have a culture now that's not even, uh, a lot of the culture is not even ashamed of sin. As a matter of fact, they want to make a parade of disobedience to God. Well, that's, that's just the wrong attitude. The right attitude, if, if you sin, you acknowledge, you agree with God, say, I sinned, I missed it. Forgive me. Help me. I was deceived. I was tricked. <laughs> Amen. And uh, they hid themselves. Well, why would you ever want to hide yourself from the presence of God? Lest you're ashamed. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Now again, when I teach this, I say God did not ask him where he was because he didn't know where he was. He knew exactly where he was. That he wanted Adam to realize where he was. Are you here today? And he said, I heard that voice in the garden and I was afraid. I want you to notice today, fear did not enter. Sin did not enter. Shame did not enter. And there was no fear in the Garden of Eden until there was sin and disobedience. Until they listened to the serpent. What am I trying to say this, this Easter Sunday morning? Don't listen to the serpent. <laughs> if he asks you, hath God said? Well, and somebody told me in a restaurant recently, they, they said they're a Christian, but they said, well, you know, uh, all, all these other churches going on board with, with this, you know, and, and all the, you know, Everybody else is doing it, so I guess we're... I said, I said, listen, sister, the Bible has not changed. God's Word has not changed. And so, so we don't ever hate a, a certain group of people, but, but we do hate sin, which is destructive and deceptive. And listen, let, let's not get it... Uh, the Bible does say there is pleasure in sin for a season. And so that's what tricks people. They, well, it feels good, looks good, and, you know. And the Bible said there is pleasure, but it's for a season. And then it says the wages of sin, or the paycheck comes, and that's death. And so the Word says do not err, do not go in error. And listen to the serpent who's trying to destroy your life. 
Amen. And the Lord God, oh, we, we skipped this part. Verse 11, and he said, Who told thee thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee, thou shouldest not eat? Verse 12, please. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And, uh, you know, husbands have been blaming their wives ever since. <laughs> That's just a preacher joke. Don't get mad at me. It's just you got to understand preacher here. But, uh, but, you know, I want to say this, you know, shift in the blame instead of taking responsibility, instead of taking accountability. So, you know, some people there, some people on camera doing what they said they, they did, you know, telling the judge, I didn't do it, I wasn't there, I didn't do it. And they got them on camera. Showing their face. Take it, taking their DNA now. My, my, my. Well, whether you fool people or not, you, you don't ever fool the Lord. Amen. Right. Come on, preacher, preacher. That's right. And the Lord God said, verse 13, please, to the woman, What is this thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me. Beguiled. There's guile in the serpent. It's a, it's a form of intelligence, but it's used to trick, to deceive, to, to lie, to cheat. You understand? That's that's the way the serpent operates. That's the spirit of the serpent. Amen. And the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Can you see sin doesn't pay off? Amen. That's not much of a future, is it? And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I'll greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception and sorrow shall thou bring forth children. Thy desire shall be to thy husband. He shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And shalt thou eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. So in other words, he used to work under the grace of God. And now he's working under the curse of the fall. For out of it thou was taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shall thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. So you've heard it said before in the beginning, was Adam and Eve. And that is correct. It wasn't two men. It was not two women. It was Adam and Eve. And that's the way God created And his word does not change. Amen. Amen, oh me, or find another church, I guess. But uh, we, we preach the Word of God. Uh, if you got your Bibles, go to the New Testament, please. We, we're not going to leave you on a sad note, because this is Resurrection Day. This is Happy Day. <laughs> Jesus washed our sins away. But Romans 5, sometimes people don't understand why we sing, why we rejoice in what Jesus has done. Notice, please, oh, the, whole, the whole chapter is wonderful, but, but notice in verse 6, just for time's sake, uh, Romans 5, 6, For when we were yet without strength, when, when Eve listened to the serpent, when Adam committed treason against God and disobeyed God, it took their life, it took their strength. Because there is a spiritual strength that comes from knowing the Lord, to resist the devil. To resist his deception. So when we, when humankind fell into sin, we were without strength to save ourselves. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure, for a good man some would even dare to die. 
But God commendeth His love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now, somebody say now, justified by His blood. And so because of sin, we need the blood of the Lamb, the Savior, to save us from sin's power. We shall be saved from wrath through Him. There is coming a day when God will judge the world. And Jesus said God will judge all the nations according to whether or not they've received His Word and been obedient to His Word. And all the humankind will stand before the great white throne judgment of God. Well, somebody said, I don't believe in God. Well, whether you do or don't. Somebody said, I don't believe in heaven. I don't believe in hell. Well, whether you do or don't, one day. The Bible said it's appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment. And so, so it's a good idea right now to go ahead and receive Christ as your Savior. Amen. And to be saved. And to be have your have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> So, uh, we're now justified by His blood, and we shall be saved from His wrath. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled. Now, if, that's sound, if that sounds like relig religious talk to you, think, think of two, two people fighting, arguing, fussing. I won't get into the rest of it, but you know, bad blood towards each other. And they won't sit together for Easter dinner because they're mad at each other. Em empty places at the family table. Are you here today? Mm -hmm. So, so you go as a peacemaker. You say, I want to bring these two back together because it's the devil that's caused this strife and this contention and this offense and constantly, you know, fighting with each other. And so you want to bring them. So that's what Jesus did. Jesus came to reconcile us sinners back to God through His blood. So that we could again, instead of the wrath of God, now the favor of God, now the blessing of the Lord could be upon our lives. Hallelujah. I believe I'm getting ready to preach. <laughs> now notice this. this. This is good news this morning. Verse 14, please. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. See, from Adam to Moses, there was no way out until God gave Moses His Ten Commandments. That was the only way out, was to hear God's Ten Commandments and to obey them. But guess what happened? People disobeyed those Ten Commandments. So they messed up that covenant also. <laughs> Even to them that did not sin after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as offense, so also is the free gift. Somebody say free. Free. For if through the offense of one, talking about Adam, remember we read that in Genesis 3. One, through the offense of one, many be dead. Remember, God said you shall not eat it, you shall not touch it, lest you die. They died spiritually from that moment. I said they died spiritually from that moment on. That's why they hid themselves from the presence of God. You know how many people walk around spiritually dead? And they just think of themselves as a body and a mind. And don't know about their spirit. Because they're spiritually dead. But when you come to Christ, I said when you come to faith in Jesus, your spirit is made alive. And I remember the day. December 18th, 1988. Praise God for I was walking around spiritually dead. But thank God for faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I had no plan to be a preacher. I can tell you that right now. That was the first, I was a Jonah. God called me one way, I was going the other way. But thank God for His grace. Amen. Now, are you ready for this? Yeah. Maybe, maybe... Uh, Oh, I don't have my New Living Translation. But uh, look at, look at uh, 17. 
For if by one man's offense, talking about Adam's sin, death reigned by one, much more. Y'all know what much more is? Yes. Much more, they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came to all men to condemnation. So we're all born into sin unless we receive Christ. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men to the justification of life. Amen? Now look at, uh, for time's sake, John chapter 20. I'm preaching a little bit like an auctioneer because we've got, you know, the kids program. Then we've got the special Easter program tonight. We've got a presentation. We've got a... Now you don't want to miss tonight. Some of you are not used to Sunday night church, but Sunday night, 7 o'clock, we've got a great Easter presentation and dinner afterwards. Amazes me how dinner wakes people up. All right. <laughs> the first day of the week, like the Lord woke me up at 6 this morning, but the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early. Somebody say early. Early. When it was yet dark to the sepulchre, seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. She runs, comes to Simon Peter, the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They've taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre. We know not where they've laid him. Peter went forth, and that other disciple and came to the sepulchre. They both ran together. The other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulchre. Stooping down, looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter, following him, went to the sepulcher, seeth the linen clothes lying, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by himself. Now, look at uh, uh, 13, please. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? And she saith to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Amen. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I'll take him away. I love this. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. Amen. When you hear the voice of the Master, You've heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said in John 10, My sheep know my voice. Yes. And as soon as he said Mary, she knew it was him. Amen. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, you know, in the Hebrew, Rabbi is, is teacher, which is to say master. Amen. And Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. So Jesus was on the cross. He said, it is finished. The Bible records there was a great earthquake. And the Roman soldier, the centurion, said, truly, this was the Son of God. His, he said, it is finished. His spirit left his body, descended to the lower parts of the earth. Jesus has already tasted death for every man. So that, that's the greatest fear that, that people actually have. Some people say it's fear of public speaking, they, how they look in public, you know, fear, fear of flying, fear of cliff diving, fear of underwater. It really is the fear of death. That, let's just break it down. But Jesus has already descended into the lower parts of the earth, into heaven. And he's already tasted death. And the Bible said in Revelation chapter 1, he has taken the keys of death and of hell and of the grave. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. So some people say, why don't there religious people sing all their songs and shout? But if you knew the truth, you'd be, you'd be, you'd be happy to. Praise the Lord. Jesus has already conquered death. But then the Bible tells, tells us, He told Mary, I've not yet ascended. So first He descended. So the Bible breaks down in detail how that he paid the price. Brother Edmund was saying earlier, talk, testifying of the debt is paid. He paid the bill. He paid for our sin. That's right. He took his own blood once 
and to the Holy of Holies. Amen. And listen, he did what you and I could never do coming to church every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night, giving all our money to the poor, all our good works. He did what we could never do in a thousand lifetimes. Amen. He paid the price once and for all for our sins. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 When you've got news that good, why do we keep it to ourselves? Man, I, you know, all the cars we pass by that, oh, it's just a nice day outside. Yes, it is a nice day outside, but Jesus has risen from the dead. <laughs> and how can we not share that with the world? That He's risen from the dead. Now, so he said, Touch me not, for I'm not yet ascended. This is 17 of John 20. And say to them, I ascend unto, I love this, my Father and your Father. Listen, they never knew God as Father. They only knew Him as, you better walk in the fear of the Lord. Because here's the law. Hey, you just, just be thankful that you're not going to church under the old covenant. That's all I can tell you. You think it takes a long time to get ready for church? You'd have to bring in some sacrifices. And I'm not talking about sacrifice or praise. I'm talking about you, under the law, you had to bring in some sin sacrifices. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. I ascend to my Father, your Father, my God, your God. Hallelujah. Now, notice verse 24, please. And this is not us today. This is a Thomas kind of faith. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Except I shall see. Now remember Genesis 3? When she saw that the tree looked pleasant to the eyes. And see, we've been programmed that way ever since. And that's why God said, For we walk by faith and not by sight. So when you trust the Lord, the healing will come. When you trust the Lord, the provision for the vision, the money will come for what He's called you to do. Amen. And the breakthrough will come. I don't care what it, look, what it looks like. When you trust God and stand on His Word, it will come to pass. Amen. Amen. He said, except I shall see in His hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side. Can you see how much sin cost? He took, he took nail prints in his hands. For our sin. It wasn't his sin. It was our sin. And the spear in his side. He said, what did he say? This is open book quiz. You know, everybody gets an A. I will not believe. How many people you know say, I will not believe? Well, some of them said, I will not believe lest Jesus appears to me. And some of them had had Jesus appear to them. But notice what he said in verse 26. After eight days, again, his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Now, one, one translation said they were all huddled together hiding for fear of the Jews. And so the, the remedy for, for the fear of man is the peace of God. Yes. Amen. And so the enemy would like you to walk in the fear of man, but when the peace of God comes, yes. then you've been set free from fear. Amen. Uh, so Jesus comes to... Right, now the doors were shut. The doors were locked. <laughs> he walked right in there. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger. Behold my hands. Reach hither thy hand. Thrust it into my side. Be not faithless, but believing. Amen. Yes. So people that operate by what they see can actually see it and still not believe. I'll say that again. People that operate by that type of faith can actually see God do it. And still in their heart not believe. Amen. 
And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. And that's the right answer. Mm -hmm. Now notice verse 29, please. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've delivered to you the word that God asked me to, to give to you. And I'm going to ask the praise and worship team, also the prayer ministry. We're believing God that if you've never made peace with the Lord through faith in Christ, thank God for our Easter egg hunt. We do that for the kids. But this is all about finding peace with God. Amen. And my hope and my prayer is that the Lord would fill every blue chair. Amen. with people that need to hear the word yes. and there'd be such a catch such a harvest that we'd have to have other churches other ministries yes. instead of competition helping each other praying for each other serving one another hallelujah but if you're here today you were like I was a, a 20 year old that didn't know Jesus I said a little prayer in the back of a little pamphlet when I was nine years old. Didn't really understood what that meant. But when I was 20 and I heard the gospel, I knew the Lord was drawing my heart. Of course, you know, the devil wants to sit on the shoulder and say, Oh, go have fun. Live it up. You can, you can do all that when you're old, you know, get religious. But I heard the Holy Spirit saying, come forward. Receive my son Jesus. Be free from sin. Son, I love you. I sent my son Jesus to shed his blood to die for you on the cross. If you're under the sound of my voice today, and I know there's a few, and you say, I've never publicly acknowledged Jesus Christ as my Savior, as my Lord. Jesus said, if you'll not be ashamed of me before men, I will not be ashamed of you before my Father and all of the holy angels of heaven. If you're here today, I'm going to ask you to take a step of courage. That's you. Would you raise your hand this morning? Say, that's me, Pastor. Pray with me to receive Christ as my Savior. Anybody today, no one want you to leave the service needing Jesus. You say, I need the Lord. Anybody today while the Spirit of God is moving? Hallelujah. Lord, I pray for America. I pray for this nation. Father, that we would not be in pride to think that we're smarter, but that we'd listen to the Word of God. That we could turn back to the Lord. We could humble ourselves and pray turn from our wicked ways. Lord, that you would hear from heaven. That you would heal our land. Help us, Lord, to be the church, to share the good news of the gospel. Anybody today say, I need Jesus on the Holy Spirit's moving. The second invitation is, you say, I, I've received Christ, but I'd like to be filled with the Spirit Jesus said you'll be endued with power from on high. I'd like to be filled with the Holy Spirit like Acts 2.4. Speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. You say, that's me. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need Jesus or you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Anybody today? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's sing it.
and you've just got turmoil in your soul. And the Lord wants you to have His peace. And that's the first step, is to receive Christ. But then we want to pray with you to receive His peace. Because the Bible said, whatsoever is honest, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is lovely, if there be any praise, if there be any virtue, think on these things. And he said, the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and keep your minds through Jesus Christ. So we want to pray with you about just thinking God thoughts, thinking uh, according to the Word, and to receive His peace. Amen? Anybody today in that, in that third invitation just want to be free from turmoil in your soul? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus is waiting with open arms. So come, just as you are. Now this is the, this is the final invitation today to receive Christ, be filled with the Spirit, also to receive His peace. But here's the commission of the Lord to His officers in the Lord's army. Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. God's anointed this church to be a solo winning church. Sometimes we, we don't mind catching fish, we don't want to clean fish, but the Lord will clean the fish. We, we're just supposed to Share the, the word, share the gospel. Amen. The final invitation is a is a prayer, an anointing, not to keep the good news to our thank God we're going to heaven. I like what one preacher said. He said, uh, a missionary, good friend of ours. He said, Brother, he said, when I go up in the rapture, he said, I'm gonna grab somebody close to me. And if they're a sinner, <laughs> Honestly, you better get saved while we're going up. Uh, I'm gonna let go. <laughs> you just gotta understand this humor. But uh, I mean, some people don't believe unless they see it. When they see Christians go up in the rapture. I guess they'll have some kind of news story to explain it. But um, go ahead and get saved now. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody's here today. And you say, "I want to be a fisher of men. I want an anointing." To share the gospel. Amen. Amen, sister. Come on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for you. Amen. Lord, you said to be endued with power. Wait in Jerusalem till we be endued with power from on high. Come on, Pastor Beth. With open arms. So come just as you are. An endowment, a grace to win the lost. In the name of Jesus. An epistle, a living epistle, read of men to come to Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for an anointing, a grace. Oh, in Jesus' name, we're certainly not feeling sorry for ourselves, but praise God, we're busy about our Father's business. Thank you, Lord, for purpose. Not just living long, but the purpose of the Lord. To work together, to pray together. Lord, Oh, thank you, Father. I see that. Thank you, Lord. Not just natural children. Not just natural grandchildren. But the Lord says, the Spirit of the Lord says spiritual children. And spiritual grandchildren. From the Don't worry about what to say. I'll give you the words. In Jesus' name. An empowerment. A grace. Amen. To be fishers of men. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know. I know. A grace. A grace. A grace, Father, in the name of Jesus. A grace. The grace of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. Jeremiah said, Thy word is like a fire shut up in my bone. Hallelujah. And he had to release that word. In Jesus' name. Holy Ghost. <laughs> The Lord says, I'm burning away the wood, the hay, and the stubble. Hallelujah. 
God says, I'm going to simplify things. I'm going to simplify, make it real simple. Matter of fact, you're going to travel light. For he said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. You're going to travel light. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> yes, ma'am. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your peace that passes understanding. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Lord, for the joy of the Lord which is her strength. Strength beyond her natural strength. And the strength to stand and strength to be a testimony like an oak tree. Looking at an oak tree, just give, it's, it's a symbol of strength. The Spirit of the Lord is strength within you. In Jesus' name, in the peace of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for a fisher of men. The original plan of God. The original purpose of God. It'll not be subverted, sidetracked, or hindered. But even as the Lord says through the prophet Isaiah, I go before thee to make the crooked path straight. The Lord says, I straighten it out. And Jesus in an endowment of power from on high to do what he's called. Not the plan of man, but the plan of the plan of God. The plan like a like a puzzle fits only in one part perfectly. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. For the Lord has ordained and the Lord has called. And the Lord has anointed in the name of Jesus an activation of spiritual gifts. In the name of Jesus. But the Lord says, the Spirit of the Lord says, speak for it. You've got to say something. You've got to speak the word. Speak the word. Speak unto the mountains. Speak unto the mountains. And watch them be cast into the sea. As you not doubt in your heart, but believe that those things which you say, and the Lord says, say them in agreement. For if two of you shall agree touching anything, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Dreams, visions, plans, purposes, pursuits, even now from this hour, is an activation where they begin to come to fruition. And the Lord says, He'll, I will heal thee, I will bless thee, I will strengthen thee, and provision comes from my vision. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, the devil said you wouldn't make it this far. Hallelujah. Thank God. I said thank God. Thank you, Lord. Shola Brianala. Shola Brianala. Now, you know what they say. I've been to church consulting groups and they tell you to put a coffee bar in your lobby and preach for 20 minutes if you want a crowd. Well, we, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray in our understanding. We pray in the Holy Ghost. We believe in all nine gifts of the Spirit. Gifts of healings. Gifts of miracles. <laughs> Thank you. I, I see a great harvest coming. I see a great harvest coming. In the name of Jesus. Great harvest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, Bob, what the, what the surgeon started naturally, the Lord says he's completing Supernatural. So because He has purpose for you. And of course there's musical gifts, but God says He has purpose. He has purpose even in anointing as you play. As you play. Not only a technical knowledge, but an anointing. Thank God for the, for the technical knowledge, but there's an anointing as you play. The Spirit of the Lord will destroy yokes of bondages. But God says also concerning healing. He's completing what they did naturally, supernaturally, in the name of Jesus. So you know how there's a, you know how there's stitches, there's sutures. I, I saw that the Lord, the Lord healing, internal. I'm talking about internally. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The Holy Ghost can interrupt my service anytime. It's His service. It's not my service. It's His service. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So 
Some people don't understand things of the Spirit. But you just keep sitting under the Word. The understanding will come. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, anybody that needs the Lord, we don't want to close before we give that opportunity. We're here to pray with you and pray for you. And in fact, we're here to pray with you after the service. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, the Lord said this to me some years ago, and I'd forgotten all about it. But uh, sometimes I would, I would go to preach my message, you know, that I'd worked on. And the Lord would say, call the people up for healing. And I said, first, we haven't even done any other part of the service. And the Lord said to me, he said, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And in fact, there, there have been people sitting in services with certain symptoms. And he said, if you, if you call them up and they'd receive, they'd go ahead and receive their healing, then they could enjoy the service. <laughs> well, that was 10 years ago. I, I'm, I'm really forgotten about it. But that was in, in certain cases because uh, there are things imparted by the Holy Spirit that we need. And sometimes we don't realize we need them until next week or next month. And then I, I thank God for everything He's put in my spirit. And I've needed every bit of it, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Won't you, uh, you're, you're such a wonderful congregation to preach to and teach to. And we're honored and privileged to serve as pastors here these, these past 10 years, praise God. It goes by quick. But uh, honey, won't you please stand with me? We want to ask you to please stand as we dismiss, praise God. Thank you, Lord. And the Lord, number 622, spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and his sons, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them. Now notice, in Christ, we've been uh, drafted in into the covenant of God with Israel. Praise God. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. We pray the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be with you all. We call you blessed. We love you. God bless you. Don't forget there's a special Easter egg hunt. A bunch of kids running out in the backyard having fun. So you might as well enjoy it with them. And then tonight at 7 o'clock, special Easter program dinner. Amen. God bless you.